In this video, I'm going to show you how to test for the strength of the adductor muscle group. And you can also use that to ascertain if you have any strain or tears within those muscles. Now, we've got what they call the short adductors. So the short adductors are four, and it starts with the smallest called the pectineus, and then you've got the next one, which is adductor brevis, then adductor longus, and adductor magnus. And then you've got the long adductor, which is then called gracilis. And gracilis crosses the knee and will insert to the pes anterine area. The adductor magnus will go to the adductor tubercle of the knee just here, or the medial part of the femur, and also goes to the linear aspera. And then the adductor longus and pectineus and brevis will also attach onto the linear aspera coming from the, the ramus or the pubis. Now, the adductors are mainly obviously adduction of the hip joint, okay, but they also internally rotate the femur. They also assist in hip flexion. And gracilis also works on the knee, as in the tibia, where it flexes the knee, and it can also internally rotate the tibia in relation to the femur. So we do a few things. So when we test them, when you test muscles, we have a choice, okay? We start off in a isometric, then we can move on to isotonic concentric, and then we can also test isotonic eccentric. I'll explain as I go through. Now, if you test the muscle in a shortened position, and we ask the patient to resist, it might not be painful, even though you have torn it. Because what you've done, you've allowed the muscle to be held in a shortened position. So what that means is you might have to take it to a lengthened position, and then activate the muscle from a lengthened position. I'll explain as we go through. Now, let's look at the short adductors. So the way we can test them is if I bend the knee, one way could be, there's a few ways here, okay? So we'll just do a few videos covering many muscles of the hip area, but the first one is to focus on the adductors. So to start with, we can say to the patient, what I want you to do is push against me, as in, so he is adducted. Okay, is either going to say it's painful or it's not? Okay, it's weak or maybe it's not. If it's weak, we have to be a little careful. Why? Because if there's weakness with no pain, it might be a neurological issue. So what that means is it might be um, the obturator nerve, which comes from L2, L3, L4 of the lumbar spine. So you might have a lumbar spine pathology affecting the nerve root, which is affecting maybe why the hip is weak in adduction. So just bear that in mind. If it's painful, if he says, oh yes, I feel it, he might be a footballer and he might have strained the adductor longus. Okay, so technique number one, where we ask them isometrically to contract. So again, push your leg in that way. Okay, so he's contracted. And he might say to me, yes, I feel it where my fingers are, or maybe higher around the ramus or pubis. You can, if you want to, bend both knees. This is a typical test that people would do. And then they would normally put the fist between the knees, bring your legs in a little closer, put the fist between both knees, and then ask a patient to squeeze in quite tight. Tight, tight, tight. And then if he says it's painful, then that might indicate a pathology within the soft tissue muscle tendon. Now, the only problem is about this movement here is that you've allowed the hip to flex. So the adductors are hip flexors, so we're basically shortening those muscles. So what we might want to do is allow the leg to drop out against you here, okay? So the adductors are slightly on stretch now. And again, repeat the same process. Can you push against me? Okay, so he's still adduct in, but he might notice some symptoms. If you said to the patient, what I want you to do is overcome me, off you go, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so now that would be known as an isotonic concentric maneuver. If he does that one again, pull in, okay, but if I, if he's contracting and I overcome him whilst he's contracting, pull in, and I overcome him, then that would be, it's almost like a sort of an eccentric test. It's not true to say that because what happens is the tissue is coming together, so the actin and myosin and the sarcomeres are coming together here, and what you're trying to do is trying to separate as he's trying to contract those. So it's, it's sort of eccentric, but not quite. So we're trying to lengthen as he's trying to shorten. What I do guarantee is if he's torn it, he won't like it, okay? So if he tries to overcome you and then you overcome him, whilst he's contracting, you might find it becomes painful that way. You can test hip flexion. The only problem is with hip flexion, there are other muscles like the psoas, the iliacus, the rectum, the sartorius that will be involved in hip flexion. Another way we can test, if we 
bring the leg over, so now we take it off hip flexion and I stabilize the leg here. Then if I said to my patient, pull your leg this way, that's also testing the short adductors. If I brought the leg straight and asked him to pull his leg in now, okay, it's testing the short adductors and the long adductor. Be careful because the hamstrings are involved a little bit here. So then you can test a few things in this position. And the last one I do will be I come around this way and then one hand comes on the inside of the malleolus, the opposite hand on the other side, and then I ask my patient to squeeze in, please, squeeze in tight, and I'm almost pushing apart, so he is resisting with some effort. And again, if my patient said it's painful, it would indicate some pathology within the adductor muscle group. So there's a few variations there, so we start with isometric, we did isotonic concentric and isotonic eccentric, but the modified version. If you have an adductor strain, no doubt, one of those tests I've shown you would pick it up. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.